everyone, I'm Amethyst, and welcome back to Ask an Autistic. I want a renaissance to shine a light, be the change we want, set things right. We've been waiting in the dark for so long. Autistic shutdowns are similar to autistic meltdowns in that they are physiological and mental reaction to stress, to sensory overload, to emotions, to an uncontrollable situation, basically any negative sensory input that overwhelms and overloads your brain. Shutdowns are similar to and sometimes interconnected and intertwined with disassociation. Disassociation can occur in non-autistic and autistic individuals, and it's a brain's method of self-protection when there's too much going on. It's a self-preservation technique to withdraw and, and save yourself. Some autistics who experience shutdowns will also experience disassociation at the same time or at different times and in different degrees. Not every autistic will experience disassociation though. Some signs of shutdown in autistic people include withdrawal. So suddenly an autistic person is making less eye contact and they're speaking much less if at all. Going nonverbal is something that happens to a lot of autistic people in stressful situations when they're sick or tired or when they're about to shut down. Somebody who is experiencing autistic shutdown won't want to be around people. They may try to leave the area or leave the room. They might not be able to explain why they're doing so. So it may look or appear to others as if they're running away or withdrawing suddenly for no reason. An autistic person who's shutting down or who has shut down may have a blank expression. They may appear to be staring off in space or not looking at anything in particular, and they may not be making any facial expressions. It may almost seem as if they're catatonic. A very common behavior for autistic people going through shutdown is to get under furniture or to go under a blanket, to cover their face or their head with something, and to withdraw to a quiet, dark, safe place. For me, I really like small, dark places. Um, a lot of autistics will either curl up in the fetal position when they're shut down or just collapse and flop on the ground. Some autistics will also become very stiff. Very often when I experience shutdown, especially if it comes on suddenly, whatever position I was in, I am kind of, I'm stuck in that position. It just feels like it would take a tremendous amount of effort to move and I almost feel detached from my limbs as if I'm not really in control of them. And so while some autistic people may curl up in fetal position or flop down or hide somewhere, I tend to just go completely stiff and stare straight ahead in whatever position I was in. I stay in that position until I have control of my body again. Whereas meltdowns are a very outward expression, um, emotion and energy and anxiety is kind of exploding outwards, shutdowns are much more internal. I find that my shutdowns are often triggered by emotional pain and um, even if they weren't, if they were triggered by a sensory overload or um, a surprise in my day or a change of schedule or just I'm anxious and overwhelmed, I will still have this emotional pain accompanying the shutdown. It's very frustrating for me. It's as if I know what's happening and I know what's going on around me. I can hear people speaking and sometimes I understand the words, but it's like I'm so weighed down and my brain has shut down completely that I can't respond. And so that can be very frustrating, especially when I'm starting to feel more calm and I want to come out of the shutdown. It can be quite difficult to, to come back and to move my body again, to start looking around and taking in visual input and hearing what people are saying. Some autistic people have something called alexithymia, and that's where you have trouble identifying or feeling the emotions that are going on inside you. So you might know that you feel bad. You have a vague feeling or you know that you feel bad, but you aren't able to identify exactly how you feel bad. Are you angry, jealous, frustrated, sad? Some people with alexithymia can't identify what they're feeling in the moment at all. Only later will they maybe be able to identify it. I'm speaking of alexithymia because it's connected to shutdowns. I find that a lot of autistic people who experience alexithymia will not know that they're at the point of shutdown until they get there, which is quite frustrating. And autistics with alexithymia may have trouble coming out of their shutdowns, and their times of shutdown may last longer, and the recuperation time after may take longer than other autistics. My husband Marvin is autistic, and I've never seen him experience a meltdown, 
but I have seen him shut down. And for him, um, when he shuts down, he both experiences some alexithymia and shutdowns. So what he describes it as feeling like is just empty or stuck. But when he's shutting down or when he has shut down, the main symptom is a very pervasive difficulty. Difficulty in, in listening to what other people are saying, difficulty in speaking or responding, and in moving his body or motivating himself. So shutdowns can be from very severe, a person who you know, collapses or curls up in the fetal position and doesn't move for, for four hours, or they can be more mild, where a person could even still be walking around or nodding in agreement to someone who's talking, but inside they are beginning to shut down and experiencing those internal symptoms. So what can you do for somebody who is, is shutting down in your presence or has shut down? The first thing to remember is safety. If the autistic person is shutting down and they're in a crowded or noisy environment, if they're somewhere unsafe like the side of a road, or if they're about to go off on their own, you might want to make sure that they have access to a safe, quiet, calm place where they can um, experience their shutdown and then come out of it. The second thing is to try not to ask too many questions or to talk too much because a lot of the time what people will say to try to help an autistic person avoid shutting down or, or through their shutdown will actually worsen it or aggravate the problem, make the shutdown last longer. So keep the questions simple and try not to talk too much. Keep in mind that a person going through shutdown may be feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, very emotionally sensitive, they may feel agitated or irritated, and so they're probably going to want some time alone no matter how they're feeling. Every person is different, so if your autistic friend or family member um, indicates that they want you to stay, do so. Stay in your buy and, and read a book or do something quietly and wait with them, and you can support them in that way. My last tip to help an autistic person through a shutdown is to keep in mind um, all their senses. For myself, because I can't move my body and I can't respond, like I'm completely shut down when I'm, I'm shut down, I really don't like to be touched. When I'm shut down, I feel very vulnerable, I can't protect myself, I can't move my body, and touch really just amps up my sensory overload and adds to my anxiety. Again, every autistic person is different, so something like a tight hug might be helpful or even wanted. This is something that you should discuss with your autistic friend or loved one before they're having a shutdown. Ask them what kinds of things or stim toys or their favorite blanket or having a pillow or some water, what things help them through their, their shutdowns and what you can provide if it, if it happens in your presence. Keeping in mind all of an autistic person's senses, you want to make sure that the environment is calm and quiet and that if there's anything that they have that they need, like a favorite stuffed animal or a blanket to cover their head or if they're lying on the ground maybe a pillow to make them feel more comfortable. Try to make sure they have that and try to not have too much sensory input in the environment because that does directly feed into overload which can aggravate shutdowns and cause them to go on longer. Like meltdowns, shutdowns are a physiological and emotional and mental response to overload. They're similar to dissociation and sometimes accompanied by dissociation in that the brain is trying to protect itself. Just too much is going on. Keep in mind that shutdowns aren't voluntary and that they suck to go through too. And like meltdowns, shutdowns can be an indication that there is too much going on in an autistic person's life, that there's underlying stress or anxiety, that, um, that maybe steps need to be taken towards better mental and emotional health and coping skills for stress particularly if the autistic person in question is having a frequent amount of shutdowns or many shutdowns close together without a lot of recovery time in between. This is my video on autistic shutdowns. I hope it was helpful for you guys and that the examples from my own life and from Marvin's experiences maybe helped you think a little bit about what your shutdowns are like or about the autistic person in your life and what their shutdowns are like and how you can help them through it. I am back from our hiatus now, so you guys can be expecting to see new videos on Thursdays. I update for three weeks in a row and then I take a week off. So every fourth week, no video, but you can expect a video next week. If you have an idea for a topic that you would like to see covered in one of my Ask an Autistic episodes, please feel free to post your suggestion in the comment section below or message it to me. So if you want more stuff on autism and disability and living life on the spectrum, 
please do check out my blog, which I will link to in the video description below, along with a few resources for you guys to take a look at. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Ask an Autistic. I want a renaissance to shine a light, be the change we want, set things right, we've been